Welcome to the screencast provocatively titled, How Do We Know If a Statement is True? So in the last video we defined mathematical statements to be declarative sentences that have a definite truth value. Some statements are obviously true, like 2 is even, and some are obviously false, like 3 is even. But what about statements whose truth values is not so easy to determine? How do we determine truth? Well, let's look at a case study here, and we're going to define an important kind of number here first. We're going to say that a positive whole number p is a prime number if p is bigger than or equal to 2, and if it only has two divisors, namely 1 and itself. So the numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 139, my favorite prime number, 8675309, which was immortalized in a catchy tune from the 80s, are all prime numbers because they are whole numbers. They are all bigger than 1, uh, bigger than or equal to 2, that is, and can only be evenly divided by 1 and themselves. And non-prime numbers include numbers like 4 and 12, which have divisors uh, more than just 1 and themselves. For example, 12 can be divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, and 12. So here's a statement to think about. Whenever p is a prime number, the number 2 to the p power minus 1 is also a prime number. Now this is a statement because it's a declarative sentence. Uh, it's declaring that something is true, and the statement's truth value doesn't depend on opinion or on the particular value of p. It's saying that as long as p is a prime number, whenever p is a prime number, so is the number 2 to the p minus 1. So this is a statement. It's a claim. Being a statement, it's either true or false, and the question is, which one? Well, it's very hard to tell just by looking. Finding out the truth value of this statement is a mathematical problem, and a solution to that problem will consist of two things. First, we have to clearly state whether the statement is true or false. That's got to be part of the solution. And then, very importantly, we have to explain why the statement is true or false. And to understand the solution of this problem, as with the solution to any problem, we need to first experiment with the problem and play with it. So let's pick some prime numbers and just compute 2 to the p minus 1 and see what happens. And we'll keep our results in a table here. So when p is equal to 2, that's the smallest prime number, then 2 to the p minus 1 is 2 to the 2 minus 1, and that's 4 minus 1, and that's 3, and that's a prime number. When p is equal to 3, then 2 to the p minus 1 is 2 cubed minus 1, that's 8 minus 1, which is 7, and that's another prime number. When p equals 4, Oops, I can't choose that. I can't choose p equals 4. Now, why not? Well, 4 isn't a prime number uh, because it can be divided by 2. And so it doesn't fit the description of the statement. The statement is claiming something is true if p is a prime number. It says nothing about non-primes. It makes no guarantees as to what happens if p is not prime. So there's no point in playing with this problem to choose p to be anything other than a prime number. So let's move on to the next prime, which is p equals 5. Now, 2 to the 5th minus 1. 2 to the 5th is 32. 32 minus 1 is 31, and it so happens that's a prime number, too. The next prime number up the list is p equals 7. 2 to the 7th minus 1 is, let's see, 2 to the 7th is 128. 128 minus 1 is 127, and we can check and see that that's prime. So this is fantastic. All of our examples are working. So what does this mean? Let's take a quick concept check here to see what you think it means. This is a very simple concept check, but uh, you have to think about the answer here. So the fact that the 2 to the p statement was true for p equals 2, 3, 5, and 7 means what? That the statement is definitely true, or that the statement might be true, but we don't know yet? Now think about that question and pause the video and unpause it when you think you got the answer. So the correct answer here is B. The statement might be true, but we can't say that the statement is true for sure yet. Why not? Well, recall what the statement actually says. It says whenever P is a prime number, 2 to the P minus 1 is also prime. That word whenever is all important. It is saying that every example of a prime number that we or anybody else could ever produce should work. Four examples, which is what we've done here, uh, actually five examples, p equals 2, 3, 5, and 7. I guess it is four examples. Uh, that's just not enough, because uh, what about all the examples that we haven't tried? And in fact, speaking of those examples we haven't tried, let's go to the next prime number. The next prime number after 7 is 11. And we can calculate that 2 to the 11th minus 1, uh, 2 to the 11th is 2048, minus 1 is 2047, and unfortunately, 2047 is not prime. It's equal to 23 times 
times 89. So it actually turns out that this statement that I made here is false because it claimed that every time p is prime, 2 to the p minus 1 is also prime. And that's simply not the case. The statement is sometimes true, but because it is not always true, we're going to say that it is false. So it seems like we failed somehow, but we've actually been successful in solving our problem. We've determined that the statement that whenever p is prime, 2 to the p minus 1 is prime, is actually false because it made a general statement about prime numbers, but we found a specific instance where that claim didn't work, a prime number p such that 2 to the p minus 1 is not prime. So one example was enough to prove the statement is false, but notice that no amount of successful examples would ever prove this statement true. Because even if we had a million examples that worked, what about that million and first one? So there's an important fact here to take away about statements like this. We cannot prove a general statement to be true using a list of examples. Now those examples are useful because they help us to make good guesses as to whether a statement is true or not. They help us to believe whether a statement is true, but it doesn't constitute a proof. So let's recap what we've seen. Given a statement that has a definite truth value, but you don't know what it is, the main way to get a feel for its truth value is to play with the problem rather than try to solve it immediately. This has two positive effects. First, you'll understand the problem better. Second, you may stumble across something that actually answers your questions, as we stumbled across the fact that 2 to the 11th minus 1 isn't a prime number in the first problem. And in either case, you'll be on a more sure footing to proceed further into the problem, whether you believe that the, uh, the statement you're trying to work with is true or not. We've seen that examples help us give a sense of the truth value of a statement, but examples don't really prove anything unless the example shoots down a general statement. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.